Hey everyone, welcome back. This is the Inspirational 30 and I'm your humble host, Jim Gardner. And thank you for tuning in. If this is your first time, uh, this is my little, little show where I have the privilege to sit down with some groundbreakers and outside the box thinkers and paradigm shifters and all avenues of life from uh, athletes, uh, soul searchers, uh, entrepreneurs, wellness advocates, philanthropists. Uh, we're all bound by the common desire to be a, a better version of ourselves every day, and that's what we inspire to be like. And hopefully you at home um, will inspire you uh, on your journey as well. So today's show um, is uh, my privilege to sit down with an entrepreneur who has made a, uh, a very successful living at uh, self-expression, running a business that um, centers around that and uh, really works on uh, employee um, uh, care and fostering their individual um, kind of desires and, and, and passions within the confine of the business. Um, uh, an uh, uh, inspirational person to me. I've known this woman for, for a long time now. And uh, anyway, welcome to the show, Lisa Hayward. Hi, Jim. Thank you for having me. Welcome to the Inspirational 30. Thanks. So are you ready for this? It's, it's, I'm ready. As sit much down. as I can be. Excellent. Yeah. See what we can do and find out a little bit about you and, you. and maybe offer some words of uh, wisdom for those at home. So give us um, a little bit of Cole's notes. Uh, what do you do? What is it? What's the company and everything? Well, I am uh, the owner of Culture Craze, and uh, we sell body jewelry, uh, accessories, clothing, and just a whole bunch of fun stuff like hair dye and things like that. So, <laughs> so the, that alternative kind of piercing tattoo community, yeah. obviously um, you're sporting some ink yourself, yeah, uh, right? Some, some piercings. Mm -hmm. um, and you've been in that kind of arena for a long time, personally, not even just business-wise, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How old when you got your first piercing? I was 13 when I got my tongue pierced. Which, 13? Yeah, which is unheard of these days, because obviously you need parent permission and all that. Yeah. But back then, it was a little crazy. I and bet your parents were kind of... They were, Whoa. they were pretty upset. Um, but now that I've made a living out of it, they've calmed down a lot. Calmed down? <laughs> yeah. Good, good. Yeah. So let's, let's get back to... Um, to your origins. So you got your start on this successful journey literally right down the street from the studio. Yes. I was working at Woodgrove Center. Um, and I, was manage I was assistant manager of a store there. And I opened up the store in the morning and I was looking down the hallway. How old, how old were you? I was 19 at the time. 19, OK. Yep. And uh, I just had a feeling that it was body jewelry. So I quickly jumped out of my store, ran down the hallway, and said, what are you guys selling? And they said, oh, it's body jewelry. And I said, I have to be your manager. I have to be your manager. You just blatantly came out and said I just that. knew it in my soul, in my heart, that <laughs> I had to be doing this. Um, after my shift that day, I had an interview. And then the next day, I uh, was offered the job. Now, it was a cart in the middle of the mall, which was pretty new back then. That was nearly 15 years ago. Um, so my friends and family were kind of hesitant. They were thinking, it's not going to be around for very long. It's going to be temporary. Um, why are you going to go down this road when it's kind of a risk? But even though I had those thoughts in the back of my mind, I knew in my heart that this is exactly what I was supposed to be doing. This was your fit. Yeah, definitely. So I took the job, um, and uh, it, was, it was different. It was... Uh, <laughs> I just think about back then, like I was handed the keys and basically said, like, here you go, like, figure it out. And I had to, and I loved it. Like, I loved figuring out what the body jewelry was and, and what the codes were on the till and how to sell. And, and like, there wasn't much training back then. Um, it was definitely something that I had to take on myself and figure out, and I was loving it. Wow. And yeah. so you loved it so much. And obviously, your work spoke for itself. But the owners at the time saw that and said, hey, you want to maybe be a district manager or kind of that evolution, right? Yeah. So how did that work? Well, I uh, was enjoying what I was doing and having good, good success. So I started training the other managers, um, opening up their other stores, helping them grow, um, passing on ideas and really motivating everybody and kind of just, yeah, a little bit of a district manager and a lot of marketing behind it, too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you really 
took the reins for them Absolutely. and ran it. Yeah. Ran it so much that you came home and... Yeah, I was loving what I was doing <laughs> and we were growing so fast, but it came to a point where I, I did want to go to school. I wanted to go into business and I wanted to get, uh, uh, you know, a, a master's degree or, or whatnot. Um, and, and the previous owners approached me and said, well, how about you buy a franchise and not go to school, um, come out to Edmonton uh, and run our stores out there alongside of you running a, a franchise. So I thought that would be awesome. Um, and that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> so you were, you were literally right out of your teens mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah. Um, you uh, went to mom and dad? I did, yes. Um, I borrowed money, money from my parents, but what I loved about it was that they, they did it in a way that it was still teaching me. They taught me about interest and they had a payment plan back. We had a uh, plan to pay it back over two years, the loan plus interest like any bank would. So I thought that was really good of them. And so you had two years to pay it off, but you paid it off in? A year. A year. Yeah. yeah. It was a lot faster than I thought good. and uh, went on to buy two other franchises, um, both with the same success, a two to three year payback plan and paid off within a so year. So you, you, you just started building the engine yeah. of, of the machine, right? Yeah. And along the way, like we were opening more stores for the company, improving things, growing, um, and really the company got bigger than the previous owners, Mike and Cherith, um, had ever even dreamed. So they had passed their dreams with the company, sure. but for me, it was just beginning. Good, so yeah. take us there. You were 24 at the time, yes, right? I and. Was Big, go <laughs> Thanks, for it, Jim. big big stuff. <laughs> yeah, um, I think that it was a natural uh, progression because they knew that I grew up with all the employees that were in the company at the time. We all worked well together and um, they knew I could run a business and that my motivation and drive was there. So they asked if I would want to purchase the company. And of course I said yes. <laughs> of course, well, obviously we're sitting here. Yeah. Um, and so at 24 years old, uh, with uh, no business degree, nope. right? Um, here I we. I knew what I was doing, but I did not. <laughs> right, <laughs> of course. Well, that's that's all of us in retrospect. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, here you are. You took over this this company, and now you're running. Fifth, how many locations? We have 15 at the moment. We have had up to 24. Right. Yes, which we might get into a little bit. Yeah. 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 Um, and it. Uh, it's, it's been really good. It, like, we made a whole bunch of changes. Um, well, let's talk about the growth and evolution. Because, mm -hmm. so, you know, at 24, you took over, you, you, you bought the company you had at that time, 15, 17 stores, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, here you go injecting now your new vision, your energy, your dynamic, uh, Lisa Hayward, into the business. Yes. Um, and it started to expand. Mm -hmm. Right, you, you you went at one point. You set up to twenty four stores. Um, how was that process? Because you just like you're saying, you're you're kind of making this up as you go. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh yeah. So trials, tribulations. Give us give us some of the the, well, the ups and amazing. downs. Like I, I think like thank God for all the staff that we had. Like we were a team and we were doing it together. And uh, the whole growth of the company was like hand in hand with them. Uh, in my like together we were doing it. Um, but when I first started, when I owned the company, we did get into franchising. Uh, we sold five successful franchises, um, and that was really to help the, the company grow and to achieve the goals that I wanted to do, but also to pay back the previous owners. So it was kind of like building that engine, yeah. getting that capital, and allowing to make those changes. Uh, we had to come up with a barcode system for everything, um, a website where you could order online. Um, just we had to create the systems inside the company that weren't quite there yet. Um, so that was extremely tough, um, and I learned a lot along the way. I remember like three months into it, stressing out, wondering oh, what's going to be in my bank account at, at, on this day and this day, and, and thinking, okay, like I have to start making, uh, getting this organized. And I started writing down the goals and what I thought my stores were going to do and what the expenses were going to be coming out. And, mm -hmm. and to me, I'm like, oh, this is so smart. 
but it turns out that's that's a cash flow statement, cash you know, flow. like, like right, right. <laughs> everybody has those. But at the time, I had no idea what that was. Right. So even though my my drive and my passion was so strong, I was behind oh, in the organization yep, side absolutely. of it all. Yep. So it was definitely a learning curve, but I enjoyed learning about it. And, and then you guys evolved into uh, permanent leasing as well, and, and there was a kind of an evolution or offshoot of your business, yes. right? Um, uh, we, we did really well. We, uh, we managed to pay off the company within five years, which was our plan. And then after that, it was right at the time where shopping centers were moving um, a little bit away from the, the carts and the kiosks. They're trying to create like a better experience for, for shoppers, and, the, and that also includes less clutter in their hallways. Um, they want to have more of an airy feel. So they were kind of letting us know like temporary leasing, these carts and kiosks might be a thing of the past. So connected with that, we were going, okay, let's get into permanent leasing. Let's go into stores. Let's go. Yeah, definitely. So our plan was, was to take it up a notch and go into, um, permanent stores, like we said. Um, and we built the new brand culture, which was, um, it was kind of made for all of our followers that had grown up with Culture Craze, and now they were wanting even more, like the, the, the clothing that the goes clothing, with it yeah. and the higher-end products that yeah. go with it. So to us, this was the next big thing. Uh, but uh, right alongside of doing that and uh, getting into like huge expensive stores and bank loans and um, permanent five, 10-year deals with malls, Alberta started to crash. So with uh, in a couple of years ago when the economy crashed in Alberta, al right as we were expanding into permanent leasing, all of a sudden, all of that capital mm. that we had to continue growth hit us. And that was the first time for me where I had to go, oh my goodness, like what are we gonna do? And like completely rebrand, or not rebrand, but re-strategize sure. and, and fix things internally fast. So that was definitely a huge hard part of, of well, running that, a business. But that's, that's the key to longevity and, and, and business success, right? I mean, what business operates always, you know, yeah, everything is all rainbows and unicorns all the time. No, it's how do you deal with, um, you know, uh, closing markets? How do you deal with malls that go out of business? How do you deal, you know, because there's other things feed different pieces of your, of your engine, right? I mean, so, and, and I think that's a testament too to, Again, you not having the savvy, you creating the savvy for yourself to understand that, how do we do it? And now you know, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's just trials and tribulations that we all go through. Mm -hmm. um, I wanna get into though, because it, it really is, this business is built around self-expression. And I'm, I think I'm correct, and you'll tell me if I'm not, but I think the majority of your employees are on the younger side Right? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm one of the oldest ones in our company. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so um, you know, we hear a lot of some negative comments about the, the young generation, um, uh, but you, you've really made that work for you. Um, and so maybe kind of tell us a little bit about that and what you've really done as your niche with yeah, that. Absolutely. Um, in the beginning, uh, and still now, it has been one of our goals to break the stereotypes of the pierced and tattooed lifestyle. So we really wanted to be the people that you could come to and ask questions and feel safe and not feel intimidated. Mm -hmm. So I think we've done a really good job of um, making it more normal. Yep. Um, I know that our company is responsible for over 5 million pieces of body jewelry sold in Canada over the last 15 years. 5 million, wow. Yeah, so um, I think we've done a good job of breaking those stereotypes. Um, and also alongside of that is just encouraging our staff to um, to be themselves, but in uh, a way that's still professional and bringing out their best style of who they are um, and putting their best foot forward. Um, one of our mottos is define yourself. So uh, adding a little sparkle here or there or a uh, tattoo and, and yeah, definitely. I mean, it's art, it's, it's a way to express yourself and it's a way that some people, when they get that piercing, they feel more like themselves. As I add tattoos, I feel more like myself. So it's just kind of encouraging people to be themselves on all levels, whether it's. So how do you, so how do you take, um, you know, a, a young 19 year old girl that, uh, or, or guy, girl that comes to you for a job and, and you know, they have that kind of that young generation 
instant gratification, this, that. Like, how do you take that and make that work for your, for your scheme? Oh, yeah, yeah. Today's generation? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it's kind of neat because I've grown up in the different generations. I've been in the company for 15 years. And, and back then, it was work hard, work hard, work hard, and show them how many hours you can put in and just keep going for it. And, right. You know, and right. and now it's it's work smarter, not harder, and it's exactly. and it's like they have this generation is incredibly smart. Uh, they have really great ideas, but if they're not heard, they're gone, and they they want that instant gratification. They want that instant result. They want that instant feedback. So it's about adapting to them and l making sure that they feel heard. Uh, giving them some responsibility in your store so they feel like they're, they have a purpose there. Um, but alongside of it is that they come up with changes so fast and you know, they're like, let's have an app, let's have a, uh, a new website and like, they, they want it done tomorrow where it's like, okay, uh, our cash flow is not there to do that. So my favorite thing to do with staff, um, and I think it's helped us keep our uh, turnover quite low, um, is to teach them the behind the scenes of, of business um, and not just have a regular retail experience. Uh -huh. Like teach them about cash flow, teach them about scheduling, teach them why we have certain people on on certain hours. Um, I've taken a lot of people with me to trade shows so that they can kind of see the behind the scenes of ordering and, and how come we can't order 50 of those and you know, like yep. just, just yep. teaching them yep. because when they're with our company, I want them to, I want them to stay forever, but if they're gonna move on, I want them to have learned something and feel like they've gotten so much more out of it than just a retail job. Mm -hmm. So, Good, yeah. good. Well, I mean, and so you're letting them, you're letting them have a voice mm -hmm. in the business. Oh, definitely. You know, yeah. and I think that's important, right? Uh, they all want to, everyone wants to feel like they're making a contribution, yeah. right? And, yeah, and I think uh, while Alberta was booming, like they had that, that idea with, Oh, I can go get a job tomorrow. So, what? Why are they going to stay? Right. Yeah. So let's well, let's talk about your success. I mean, let's talk about uh, some of your secrets to success. Like, what 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 are certain things that you've seen over the 15 years that you would say, hey, these these are some cornerstones of where why we're where we are today. Um, I think the most uh, the most important thing about our success is the fact that our company has always grown naturally. Um, it's grown with our employees and with the requests of our customers. It's been such a natural evolution of um, listening to what our employees are saying, listening to what our customers are asking for, um, and putting those into play, not telling them what they should be buying, listening to what they want. Um, but alongside of that is also getting more organized, having a plan. Um, I know that I've talked to you about the, the traction that I've been doing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I got a business mentor uh, four years ago. His name's Kevin Armstrong, and he has really provided me um, mentorship and that outside. It, the thing about being an entrepreneur is that it's, it's somewhat lonely. Like you don't have somebody telling you, good job, or, right. or like, oh yeah, you, you need to improve on this. And I still strive for that. I, I still work for that, good job, like you're doing a great, sure. great thing. Sure. Um, and having him as somebody that can provide some feedback for me has been great. So he's your outside bounce board, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you have your, your, I assume, weekly meetings, you have your, your stuff inner business and then you in turn go outside to have your kind of private think tank or, or sessions, right? Yes. I do think it's important that entrepreneurs reach out and find a mentor that they can bounce ideas off of. Kevin has been that for me. I talk to him uh, once a month uh, for an hour on the phone and then I sit on a board of directors and um, we share our company uh, stories and, and, and our to-dos and um, we report our financials and they, we give each other feedback. Um, and then from that, I take that and I bring it into my company where our company, our management team meets on a weekly basis um, where we report our to-dos and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. And we bring that down to our management level where we talk to all of our managers weekly and then the managers talk to the employees. So to me, um, Having a structure and a plan on paper, um, having your goals identified, um, and having uh, 
things that you can measure to see if your success is on track oh, yeah, or off yeah, track absolutely. has been extremely helpful. Good, good. Um, and uh, I, I think it's important, you know, we, every person I've had on the show um, and every successful person that I meet, everyone has a mentor. And you know, it's just, it, it, it's, it's like, you know, to, to anyone at home that's, that's sitting there, that's thinking about doing whatever they may want to do, build that community, right? It, it, it sounds cliche, but it's just such the truth. I mean, it just it feeds you, right? It, it feeds your desire, it feeds your creativity. Because when you're running a business, you know, you're, you're always giving yourself to everyone, like you said. And it's like you, you still need that affirmation or you need to be heard mm -hmm. in a certain way or you need to be inspired sometimes too, right? Mm -hmm, to, 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 to further your, your, your growth, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, I do want to touch on something that, that's very important to me that you do with your company. Um, and I think it, it does kind of go with your community and, and uh, I, I think with this young generation, again, um, you know, there's a, there's a big growth in awareness of, of mental health and, and issues out there. And you've taken a stand within your company to help promote that awareness among your employees, right? Mm -hmm. So let's, let's, let's sit on that topic for a sec. Yeah, I, I think it's important. I think it needs to be talked about more. Um, it's another thing that has grown naturally within our company. Um, the managers started sharing their stories to me and I would share my stories back and we would have that connection that would last, that would be more important than just the retail job. Um, and then realizing that mental health issues are way more common than we've realized in the past. Um, we started talking about it more openly in the company, whether it's uh, an email out about awareness. Um, and then we started doing videos about our stories and, and, and how to reach out and, and that we care. Um, and of course now we have a mental health policy and, and give tips to our managers on how to handle um, if they have an employee that's struggling. Um, I think the big thing is, is that it's a problem um, and we don't all have the answers to what to do and how to handle everything, but it's important to talk about and to make sure that all employees and all people realize that they are worth fighting for and they are worth that time and attention. Um, and it is handled on a case-by-case -case basis because it could be anxiety, it could be depression. Um, we've had suicide scares and, and everything in our company. And it's just making sure that we're not afraid to talk about it and that it can be something that's connected and making sure that all of our employees know that we care. Well, I think it's important. I, I, I personally, I, I think any, any employee that doesn't feel that they can reach out to their employer, they're in the wrong job. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, think, I think every business out there owes it to their employee to have their back to, to in situations like this or other situations. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I do commend you on that, and um, I, I think it's great. I'd love to, I mean, we could have a whole show about mental health and, and its awareness and, 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 and that. Maybe we will. Maybe we'll, I'd love to do a panel one day, too, and we'll get you on as well with a bunch of other people and, and have, have an open forum about that. Listen, we do have to wrap it up, but I want to kind of say, okay, so what's, what's the crystal ball holding for Lisa Hayward in the future? What's going on? I know you want to do some mentoring and yourself. I know, I know. There's definitely a lot happening with Culture Craze. I would love to get into franchising. We've got some great stores out there that would be uh, great little franchises for people. Um, but for me, myself, I get motivated and fulfilled when I can pass on information and motivate others and teach others. So I would really like to start uh, mentoring and getting into um, business advising. Um, a great spot to check out, even just for your own self to learn more, is um, EOS Worldwide. That's the program that I follow. Okay. Um, and another YouTube video would be uh, Level 10 Meetings. The Level 10 Meetings are uh, what I conduct in my company. Okay. And having your ideas and your thoughts on paper, take it out of your mind from being really stressful and, oh my gosh, I have all this stuff that I want to do getting it on paper and then having a goal to track and measure whether you're on, on board or, Great. you know, on pace or not. Great. So, um, so maybe we'll see you, um, 
you'll be conducting um, uh, groups and council meetings and things like that for other businesses. Who I knows? Would love to do that. I uh, would. Great. And and now that you're here on the island, you know there's a lot of small island businesses that maybe could use your uh, expertise. So, listen, we do have to wrap it up. Um, I do want to close though. Maybe you can just uh, give us give us the viewers at home some advice out there for people that are dying to be heard or uh, are looking to pursue something. I mean, you've, you've just told us your story. It can be done. Um, you know, uh, what, what, do you, what would you say to young entrepreneurs at home that are, that are looking to start? Well, I think I would like to pass on two messages. I think I would like to encourage business owners to really listen to their employees and um, find a way to get their ideas um, implemented or um, even answered. Um, and then on the flip side of that, anyone that's wanting to start their own business or has a goal, get it on paper and, uh, and find some measurables uh, to track it and, and go for it because it's definitely exciting and very rewarding. And seek a mentor. Yes, absolutely. Speaking of that, um, uh, you, you can find Lisa at Culture Craze online. Uh, there's contact information there. I'll put it in my show notes as well. Um, including maybe some of the, uh, the the tips you said about the uh, the YouTube videos that you watch and implement, so so our our readers and viewers can can have that information. Well, I want to thank you for for joining me um, for this quick kind of trip down entrepreneurial lane and and uh, hopefully inspiring stuff um, to to you at home. I think uh, Lisa's story on so many levels. Uh, you know, next time any one of us walk down the mall or or you at home that you're sitting here thinking you just have a job sitting at a cart in a mall or you're just flipping burgers at 19, the world is still your oyster and you can, you can do anything you want when you have a passion and a drive um, that's fueled by a purpose. Uh, you can make your own way just like Lisa did. Um, you know, I think uh, uh, for people that have businesses at home that are watching, you know, it is all about your employees. Lisa said that the, the success of her company is hinged upon the employees paving the way. Um, and I think, um, I think we all can just pave a way to, uh, to a better life for ourselves. Uh, and so that's what this show is about. Um, thank you at home for watching, and I hope you'll join us again on the Inspirational 30. Um, that's it. Thanks so much. See you again. Thanks, Lise. Thank you, Dan. Good job, buddy. Ha, <laughs> ha,